In September 2008 in Portland, Oregon, business, automotive, energy, and environmental media from across the country gathered to learn about Toyota's sustainable mobility strategy. The goal of this special program was to address the energy and natural resource issues that will directly affect our mobility options, the new technologies being developed to address these issues, the partnerships that will need to be forged to bring these new technologies to market, and how our cities will incorporate various combinations of mixed mobility in their urban design to accommodate regional energy, population, and natural resource challenges. The seminar was conducted in two parts. The morning session featured in-depth presentations from world-renowned experts on key environmental, energy, and urban design issues. Their job was to create context for where we are and where we're going. And the second thing is you've got to look at what, um, you know, what is the transport fuel? You know, what sort of ranges in transport fuels are there going to be? Should you be looking at CNG on a bigger scale? Um, should you be looking at um, how electricity becomes converted into transport fuel? Is it directly through batteries? Or is it indirectly through hydrogen into fuel cells? Or is it indirectly through hydrogen synthesizing you know, gas to liquids? You know, if you can make hydrogen out of a nuclear electricity, you can reform that hydrogen to make diesel. I mean, there's lots of ways you can make that very efficient liquid fuel out of electricity without going to batteries. I mean, you can go to batteries, but there are other ways of doing it. And it depends on economics and investment rates and so on. But you know, I'd look for more diver look for you know, expect diversity, and expect to need to have be much more efficient in 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 engines, and the whole package, to consume less and deliver the same the same outcome for the consumer. Big challenge. We have really a fragile resource in the West in water. Uh, we've used it to the max. Uh, the Sacramento. San Joaquin system is thought to be basically uh, at total utilization right now. We're going to have water shortages in the future. And the further we go into the future, the bigger they'll get. And uh, people, and particularly in the southwest, Arizona, it's hard to imagine them, them sitting there 20 years or 30 years from now um, putting up with the kind of situation that they will have to put up with. They're going to want to get out. And we have options. We have so many options. People have written and studied and talked about this, as I said, for like 20 years. So there's no lack of, of ideas about what to do. The top ones are conservation Las Vegas, and reclamation. Las Vegas is really good at this. Uh, there's taking water from one place, farmers, and giving it to people. And then just the price of water. You know, the people in Imperial Valley pay $19.95 for an acre foot of water. And sometimes it takes seven acre feet of water to grow a crop of alfalfa. And out of a crop of alfalfa, they might be making a couple hundred bucks a year per acre, something like that. Well, double or triple the price of water, and that might change the economics of that whole farming industry, not only there, but in the Central Valley of California. You can see that water and energy are, in fact, interdependent. And without one, there isn't the other. It's important to understand the connection between the two. And rarely do people think about water consumption as they turn on the light switch. Um, in their house or as they drive their car to and from work. But there is a connection. Uh, a question is, of, that, uh, of the water that is the 400 to 1,000 gallons of water that might be, depending on where it's obviously produced, how much of that is actually consumed and how much of that coming out of the distillery, the, the ethanol plant, becomes a water quality issue? and can be reused or it just simply you know, dumped into the uh, local stream and becomes a water problem? That's a good question. Uh, um, most of the water that um, is used to, for irrigation um, ends up being consumed or uh, changed in quality uh, due to pesticide runoff or uh, salinity pickup from the, the ground, uh, et cetera. And life cycle analysis or life cycle assessment is a cradle to grave view of things. But uh, the idea is to look beyond growing the ethanol. What does it take to get the plant uh, matured, planted, refined, delivered? The whole string from the raw material, seeds, to the tank. 
We think that what's going to happen increasingly is that cities are going to undertake experiments like you see here listed to try and really think through how to invent cities that can be sustainable mobility, sustainable economic development, low carbon footprint, zero energy, zero waste. The afternoon portion of the program addressed Toyota's current and future plans on how to deal with the significant challenges ahead as outlined by our morning speakers. We got to agree on the, on the goals and priorities. We've got to align our transportation and our energy needs and our regulatory efforts. If we don't do this, then we're going to be going in different directions and we're not going to solve these issues. We can't ignore the primary resources. I can't, you know, I can't, can't, what can I say about water? You know, you know it's, 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 it's a pretty severe issue. And as we go forward to climate change and as we start to take the carbon out of fuels, that's not free. That is not free. And energy costs are going to increase. And how we communicate that to your readers and to our customers and how we go forward, if we don't do that without societal preparation, societal agreement, there's going to be issues down the road. As we all know, various problems are brought about by vehicle traffic, including environmental problems caused by traffic congestion and exhaust emissions. To solve these problems, it's essential to institute comprehensive steps, such as fundamentally changing traffic infrastructure and flow, and employing advanced communication technologies in addition to improving the vehicles themselves. But it's because our footprint is ever growing and ever increasing here in North America that this growth requires us then to be a lot more accountable for what we're doing in North America and what our footprint is and how we might be able to reduce that footprint as we begin to, to become a, a larger uh, player here in North America. Uh, we have had since the year 2000 a 27% reduction in uh, the average energy per vehicle produced. Uh, the next is our CO2 uh, per vehicle produced. Uh, we've had a 23% reduction since the year 2000 uh, also, and uh, we're continuing to move forward with better ways in which to have those reductions. This new program is extremely complex with the reformed system. We have three regulated fleets. We have the reform structure now. Uh, you know, we will continue our advanced technology deployment. Um, you know, it's, it's what we think is the right thing to do, but we do favor a, a single national approach to uh, these issues um, so that we can have a single way to plan our technology. Um, it's, it's, this is too important, and there's too much potential for wasted effort. Um, from the industry, uh, from the regulators, from everybody, if we, we can't find a way to make this rational. In addition to the seminar presentations, journalists had the opportunity to test drive a Prius plug-in hybrid vehicle and Highlander hydrogen fuel cell hybrid vehicle. Attendees also took part in a city walk through downtown Portland, led by members of the Portland Urban Design Cooperative. The city walk showcased examples of mixed mobility in a high density urban environment that have made Portland an exceptional example of future urban design. The Portland, Oregon region, in fact, the state itself enjoys a reputation for environmental stewardship that dates back many uh, decades here. And since, I, and since the time I moved here over 30 years ago, I've come to discover that the place is unusual probably among American cities. In the last 20 years or so, it's also picked up a reputation for using urban design and urban development to create a human scale place that gives people here a lot of transportation choices that makes uh, uh, living here easy and, and, and doesn't require reliance on the car. And, and more recently, we've also developed an integrated transportation strategy that gives people access to bicycles, walking, bus riding, uh, light rail and even uh, streetcar system and even surprisingly skateboards and, and inline skating. So there's a lot of choices here for people who live in Portland, Oregon. This special event was designed to offer insight into the depth and complexity of the challenges facing the auto industry as it transitions into a new era where our business will no longer be about simply building and selling cars and trucks. We know there is no one answer to our sustainable mobility challenges. There will be many. No one has all the answers. 
but at least we believe our industry is beginning to ask the right questions.